If we have a car traveling at a constant speed, we can simply find its speed by doing distance over time. In another situation, this car starts with a certain speed and then it speeds up. This equation wouldn't work now because it's only applicable to an object traveling with a constant speed. We need to use some other equations of motion. Let's define the initial velocity to be u, the final velocity v, and the distance between its starting point and final position is the displacement s. a is the acceleration and t is time. These variables are related by Newton's equations of motion and there are four of them. Number one, the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. This makes a lot of sense because this here is the gain in velocity. Another one is v squared is u squared plus 2as. Third equation, s is ut plus half at squared. And lastly, s is u plus v divided by 2 times time. We can also easily explain this equation because this chunk here, u plus v divided by 2, is the average velocity. Let's put these aside and look at an example. A car is initially at rest, and after 5 seconds, it has accelerated to 12 meters per second. We have to find the acceleration. I like to use what's called the toolbox method. We write down all the variables that we know, and these will be our tools. We don't know the displacement, so I'll leave it blank. The car was initially at rest, so the initial velocity is zero. The final velocity is 12 meters per second. Acceleration is what we want to find, so I'll put a question mark next to it. T is 5 seconds. So now I need to select an equation that will only involve u, v, a, and t. I can't use any equations with displacement s involved, so it seems like I can use the first equation. But I need to rearrange it first, making acceleration the subject. To bring u to the other side, I subtract. And to bring t to the other side, I divide. Substituting numbers in from the toolbox, we have 12 minus 0 divided by 5, and that is equal to 2.4 meters per second squared for our acceleration. Let's look at another example. I drop a ball from the top of a cliff, and after 20 seconds, it hits the bottom. We want to find the height of the cliff. So essentially, we want to find the displacement of the ball because that is equal to the height of the cliff. Again, using the toolbox method, write out SUVAT. SUVAT. S is what I'm trying to find, so here's the question mark. The ball was initially in my hand at rest, so it had a velocity of zero. I don't know the final velocity of the ball, but I know acceleration due to gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. And the question tells us time is 20 seconds. I can use the third equation, s is ut plus half at squared. This becomes zero because u is zero. So s is half times 9.8 times 20 squared, giving us a height of 1,960 meters. Here's a summary of what to do when using Suvat's equations. Number one, write down all the known variables given by the question. Number two, identify the unknown. This is what the question wants us to calculate. Number three, select the equation that only involves the variables mentioned in the question. Number four, if needed, you want to rearrange the equation to make the unknown variable the subject. And finally, substitute the numbers in for your calculation.